I also see now that sometimes when you interact with something or loot something on the radar, the symbol turns into that little X thing after the fact. Although, I feel like I've seen that pop up before on stuff that I hadn't interacted with yet. So, that's kind of confusing. That's what made me think there was something left in that last outpost we visited. Because I know I've seen that before in, like, in, in like rooms that I haven't even been to yet. So, it's a little odd. Or maybe I'm just being dumb. Who can really say at this point? Cover me. I just can't let the UI in this game distract me too much. I'll go nuts trying to figure it out, and I won't accomplish anything. Beryllium. Nice. I'm gonna try and ride this mountaintop the whole way over. <laughs> if we can stay at the crest, it's probably the fastest option. Can't really see anything else around here. That's a big mountain up there. Ooh, what do we have over here? The Geth are rolling pretty deep over here, it seems like. This is probably a great time to save. They're really close to this mineral deposit, too. Let's see if I can do this without pissing them off. Sweet. Okay, let's do this, idiots. Fuck your heavy turrets. I can outgun you. You are not strong. Oh. Who shot that at me? Was it you? Got him. Whoa. Is that another guy over there? No, that's the one I already blew up. They must be on top of this mountain. I shall go for the high ground. Although, come to think of it, that's not always a good strategy in the Mako. Because sometimes you can't land your shots if you're too high above them. But I'll make it work. Yeah. Okay. This one's problematic. Here we go. Alright, so much for the resistance. Oh no, I'm being jammed. Not so much for the resistance. Not so much for the resistance. Turns out, there is still... Much resistance. Shit, what is hitting me? Nailed it. Hey, I canceled their jamming. How'd I do that? Must just be like a particular enemy who has like a jamming device or something. Geth Colossus. That's scary. I'm just gonna stay right here. Because this seems to be working out for me. For the most part. One down, three to go. 
Nice. Is that it? Oh, so... Okay, that's not quite as tedious as I was expecting. We don't have to, like, go into an area and roll through it. It's just a Mako battle. And I guess we can probably ignore all the other things on the planet if we don't feel like going for them, so... That actually won't take a super long time, I think. This is probably worth doing. Alright, so that takes care of Maji. Next up is gonna be... Hong. But there's going to be a lot of planets in each cluster. Traegir. Traegir is a tiny ice dwarf with a trace atmosphere of xenon and krypton. The frozen surface is mainly composed of water ice and ammonia. Cryovolcanic processes are gradually repaving the surface with sheets of fresh ice. Oh, that's neat. How do they come up with that kind of stuff? That's just like such fun little lore. Homal. Homal is an enormous terrestrial planet with a very dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide and sodium. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of sodium oxides and deposits of nickel. There is evidence that Pomal was once covered with broad, shallow seas. Should a probe ever be sent to the surface to check for ancient fossil life might prove valuable. It is possible, guys. Kazbin. Ooh, look at this. Kazbin is a classic pre-garden terrestrial world with conditions similar to those on Earth millions of years ago. Its hot, humid atmosphere is mainly composed of nitrogen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide. An increasing amount of the surface is covered by simple lichen and algae. Should no unexpected calamity occur, these tiny plants will change the atmosphere to an Earth-like nitrogen-oxygen mix over the next few millennia. Neat. Due to its potential for future habit habitability and sapient life, Kazbin has been designated a sanctuary, sanctuary world by the city of... Okay, I'm losing my ability to enunciate. <laughs> I apologize. It's been designated a sanctuary world by the Citadel Council. Landing is prohibited by law, and any disturbance of the fragile young ecosystem will result in harsh fines and imprisonment. At present, the planet is passing through the debris trail of a long period comet. Nice. I'll have to come back to that. Matar. Si, si, quiero matar. Matar is a terrestrial planet with a thick atmosphere composed of nitrogen and krypton. Its frigid surface is mainly composed of sodium oxide with deposits of copper. Because of noxious surface gases, explorers are warned to use extreme caution. Matar lacks a magnetic field. This makes it useless for discharging its TL drive cores in orbit. The energetic particles of solar wind from Hong strike the upper atmosphere directly, ionizing the krypton. This gives the planet its distinctive minty green-white hue. Minty! I love mint. Okay. Got one of Matriarch Dillanaga's writings. Beautiful. Thessaka. Thessaka? The Sokka is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant. In the past, it was often used as a drive discharge point for pirates raiding human settlements from the Terminus systems. In 2178, the Alliance set up a network of covert sensing devices on the Sokka's moons. Recordings of pirate FTL exit vectors over the course of six months led the Alliance Navy to eight major pirate anchorages. Since the Thessaka raids, no ships from the Terminus have been reported in the Hong system. Well, good for them. Okay. Let's take out another Geth outpost, guys. Because you know they all need to die. Honestly, I don't even really see the point of choosing a crew for these missions, but I will continue to do so. And to be honest with you guys, I think I'm going to make some executive decisions about these planets and just say we don't really need to check out everything. Anomalous signal. Yeah. We don't have any, like, story-driven side quests here. Ooh, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. Love it. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to... I think I'm just going to go for the outposts and not waste a ton of time driving around, picking up every little thing here on these planets. Man, it's like a... 
It's like a whole ocean of falling stars. Which are not actually stars, in case you didn't know that. When you see a shooting star, people call it that, but they are never actually stars. It's usually just like random dust or something that got caught in the atmosphere and is kind of burning up as it falls down through. It's just a local thing, but it's pretty. I've seen one once in my life. I don't know if that makes me lucky. I don't know how many people have seen in their lives. I think it's pretty rare, honestly. Who the hell is jamming me? That is just so rude. You guys wouldn't like it if I jammed you all day long. Seriously, I don't even know where this outpost is because I can't see it on my radar now. That looks like it. I shall rain fire upon them. From above. That is a decent amount of firepower they are hitting me with too though. That's right though. I'm gonna win this war of attrition. Oh show. Okay, who else? Who have I missed? Where's the fire coming from? Oh, this camera. You can't look up from the Mako. That's annoying. Oh, there you are, you some bitch. Oof. Oh, okay. And then I guess we got some turrets to take out too. Whoa, no. Get dropship. This is new. This is new and terrifying. Jesus. I'm in panic mode. Run these bitches over. Okay, we need some cover. Dropship's gotta go. The gun does nothing to it. Two outposts done. We're halfway there. Oh, that counts? We're not all dead, though. I will fix that. Dude, you can't hide forever. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, I wanted to run him over. Oh, that worked. Kind of. He's not dead. I can knock him over, I just can't actually kill him. Ah, there we go, that does some damage. Okay. That's good enough. Whew, dropship, guys. Shit came out of nowhere. It's crazy. So that takes care of this system. Next up, Tereshkova. Must have been discovered by Russians. Let's see what we got here. Looks like five planets. Hansara. 
Ansara is a small hydrogen helium gas giant. It, is it has unusually large amounts of nitrogen in the upper atmosphere, which glow purple when ionized by the solar wind. Ansara's convenience as a place to dump drive charges has, le has left its orbit littered with debris dumped overboard by visiting crews. Solmarlon. Solmarlon is one of Tereshkova's two outer worlds. Significantly removed from the rest of the system and with unstable elliptical orbits, it is thought that they may have formed within 3 AU of the binary stars and were hurled outward due to the instability of such an orbit. You guys may remember that an AU is an astronomical unit and it's the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Solmarlon is a hydrogen helium gas giant with significant quantities of sodium in the upper atmosphere, giving it a distinct gray color. Gray. A depressing world. Mawinor. Mawinor is the second of Tereshkova's outer worlds. It is essentially a rock of unremarkable ores with some deposits of water ice, but no minerals of value. The frozen surface is composed of silica. Like the gas giant Solmarlon, it is thought that Mawinor formed too close to the Tereshkova stars and was thrown outwards by gravitational effects. Computer models suggest it will be ejected from the system in a few hundred thousand years. Oh, The system doesn't want it anymore. It's like, get the hell out of here. Antibar, this is where we land. Okay, we'll come back. The Goose. The Goose is a terrestrial world with an atmosphere of chlorine and krypton. The surface is mainly composed of silicates with deposits of carbon. The Goose has a low mass for its size and is tightly locked to the star Tereshkova A. The temperature difference between the sunward hot pole and the dark side cold pole creates constant gale force winds across the Terminator. Neat. Get some mercury. Potamaris. Potamaris' atmosphere is very similar to Venus in terms of pressure and temperature. Unlike Venus, however, Potamaris' atmosphere has a significant quantity of oxygen, both free and bound in sulfur dioxides. The surface is largely composed of magnesia with deposits of carbon. It is possible, if unlikely, that simple life may be developing on Potamaris. Computer modeling suggests that the powerful solar winds from the Tereshkova stars will blow off Potamaris' atmosphere in a few million years, lowering the temperature on the surface to the negative 70s. That's pretty cold. Alright, and then this guy. Antibar is a cold terrestrial world with an atmosphere of methane and argon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of iron with deposits of magnesium. The world has been noted as a possible target for long-term terraforming. If the atmosphere could be increased to the thickness of Earth's, the global average temperature would rise by 10 degrees Celsius. Antibar's combination of low temperatures, high-speed surface winds, and low visibility make it dangerous to explore on foot. Well, we're gonna do it anyway. Because we're living it up, not giving a fuck. It also occurs to me that I think it's been a long time since I saved. So I'm going to go ahead and mark where I'm going on my map and then pop that save. And then away we go. This planet's actually not that huge, comparatively speaking. So this probably won't take long. See, I wish that there was actually more stuff like this. If there were these, like, unique Geth outposts on more of these random side quest worlds, that'd be interesting to me. Because at least it's a unique combat encounter, you know? Like, they haven't been set up all the same way in each one. You have to approach it kind of differently. The terrain's different. You have the dropships. You have the, the way the enemies are spread out. You know, it's just... It does make it, uh... feels a little more unique. I wouldn't mind a little bit more stuff like that. Alright, it's gotta be up in here. Can be kind of hard to locate when you're being jammed. Especially because these seem like they're strategically placed around these rocky crags, so there's, there's they're a pain in the ass to get to, you know? Smart. It's very smart. Okay, Colossus is going to go first. A 
machine gun barely touches it. Whew, okay. He did a lot of damage to my shields. Oh, and I'm getting sniped. Damn. Okay, they're they're accurate, it turns out. They're very accurate. I want an upgrade for my Mako to make my shields come back faster. That'd be so nice. Ha! Sniped. Let's just see if I can do some work from back here. Going all right so far. Gonna have to be ready if the dropship comes. Ready with evasive maneuvers, you know? I see you there, punk. There it is! Jesus! Move! I knew that was gonna happen. I was trying so hard to move. I just couldn't. I was like stuck right where I was. Oh, that sucked. Okay, so I don't have to worry about the dropship for this encounter. It seems like he just drops about a million enemies and then fucks off. I wonder if there's a better angle of approach. I gotta be able to take out that big guy, the Colossus, without losing, like, all my shields. I was sort of able to get into a spot last time where I was able to hit him, but he wasn't really able to hit me. And obviously that's ideal. That's what we should be aiming for. <laughs> Am I too close for it to save? Okay, good. I just don't want to have to make this drive over and over and over again. So we'll save right here on the outskirts. I don't know if I can go around this mountain here. I want to try and stay low if I can. Here we go, here we go. Okay. This might work out a wee bit better. Just slowly peek around the cover, take out things as I see them. He's still hitting me. Damn it. Okay. That went a little better. I think we're still in a better spot here overall, though. Whew. Okay. And when the dropship comes, I gotta fall back, try and maybe funnel them through a little bit. Try and use the cover to our advantage. Turn around, motherfucker. Oh, yeah.
It turns out that the battles go a lot better when you don't have the entire army focused right on your open position. It's funny the way that works. Geth Prime? Well, that's just Prime. There's one outpost left. I'm going to miss slaughtering Geth like this. <laughs> right? I wonder what was so prime about that guy. He went down like a bitch. Fuck him. Also, 10 points to anybody who knows what, well, that's just prime is a reference to. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'll give you 20 points for that. And no Googling. Don't cheat. Okay. Gagarin is the final system in this little... Geth Holocaust we're having here. Starting on June Thor. It's a large terrestrial planet with a thick atmosphere of carbon dioxide and chlorine. The surface is mainly composed of aluminum with deposits of nickel. Surveyors found the ruins of a technical civilization near the equator. Evidently the colony of an ancient spacefaring race. The ruins had subsided to almost nothing. Merely wind-hollowed husks of arcologies and other megastructures. In the center of the ruins was a single column whose, inscrip whose inscriptions defied translation for several centuries. When Asari linguist finally managed a translation, the elaborate relief carving said merely, walk among these works and know our greatness. <laughs> the crude scratches on base of the reverse side said, monsters from the id. What? Yo, that's some, that's some baller status stuff right there. Walk among these works and know our greatness. Monsters from the id. I mean, clearly referencing, you know, like the, the id, the part of the Freudian psyche. They just, they knew what they were, and they just wanted people to know about them too. About how awesome they were. Prussia is a relatively small hydrogen helium gas giant with large amounts of hydrocarbons in the middle layers of the atmosphere. When the Krogan Rebellions ended three millennia ago, the Turian chief of naval operations, a distinguished soldier named Mer Curry, declared his immediate retirement. He disappeared into what was then uncharted territory. It was only 200 years ago that a ship was found on the surface of Precious' largest moon. It had landed gently and been deliberately shut down. Of Admiral Mercury, however, no trace was ever found. Yet another sad space story. Somebody lost to the ravages of the emptiness. Antirumgon. Antirumgon. Why is the rum gone? It's a small rock and ice planet with a trace atmosphere of methane and ethane. The frozen surface is mainly composed of carbon with deposits of calcium. Anti-rum gun has been used as a crude anchorage for Terminus Pirates for many years. The shells of temporary dwellings blasted by Alliance frigate patrols dot the surface. But as always, uh, the pirates return to ground their ships, drive charges, chip out some water ice, and trade slaves and stories. The deeper layers of anti rum gun's interior are semi-liquid slush due to the presence of methanol. Ooh, a methanol slushy, my favorite. It is thought that bacterium in the deep core create this natural antifreeze. Some species of Terminus Pirate drill through the ice crust to recover this natural alcohol. Scans from orbit have detected a positive cobalt. Okay. So it's like an entire planet of alcohol. Sounds like my dad's wet dream. Let's see. Rangry. Rangry. Okay, that's where we'll land. Sogolrus. Sogolrus is a small terrestrial planet with a thin atmosphere of nitrogen and argon. The frigid surface is mainly composed of water ice, which can be plainly seen in the bottoms of recent craters. The dark coloration of the surface is caused by a carbon and ferrous material pushed up from the denser core by cryovolcanic processes. Nifty. Okay, Rangri is a small, barren terrestrial world. While, while it possesses a reasonably temperate climate and a number of useful resources, no mining corporation is willing to risk investment. A rogue planetoid, dubbed Voss by the initial Solarian surveyor team, entered the system approximately 10,000 years ago and was trapped in a decaying orbit around Rangri. It is nearing the end of its slow spiral inwards. Earthquakes and cyclonic windstorms are increasingly common on Rangri. Within a few hundred years, the planets will rip each other apart. Ooh, that's cool. Some Asari travel consortiums have already announced sponsorship of cruises to observe the spectacle. <laughs> That's amazing. They're planning that far ahead to watch this amazing galactic cataclysmic event. I love it. Wouldn't that take a long time, though? Like, not just to get there, I mean the event itself. 
I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it would happen relatively quickly. Who am I to say? Okay, uh, overrun research outpost? I guess that's the Geth outpost. Well, we're gonna go find out. No other place on this planet looks like a likely candidate, so we head this way. 